Okay. I think I think that means we're live. I think that means this is happening. Okay. <laughs> sure. If there's um I don't know that there's anyone there, but if if someone wants to Somebody say, say hi something. so that we know that there's actually people here. <clears throat> Hello. Empty chat room. <laughs> My name is Rouge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. There are people here. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Hello, a determined number of people. <laughs> so, yes. Hi, Ruth. This is Rouge. As you probably know, if you stumble on this channel, I really don't feel like our channel is large I mean, enough that people who don't know our band would find it right at the start. Possible. So, it's but possible. anyway, I don't know. but hello, yeah. um, we are going to be making a cocktail Yay! and then just shooting the shit. Yeah. That's what for we do. Like a while. We're, we're the, we're the half of the maidens that doesn't usually do streaming. So this yeah. is our first time really. But we do do this. drinking. But we do do drinking. We are the half of the maidens that does the drinking. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> so, Not to Annie's chagrin at every con we go to. Yes. <laughs> Anyway, um, so... So, yeah, so Rouge and Sabre, which mm -hmm. you may already know, but we'll mm -hmm. make sure that we say our actual names. And, and the cocktail that we're going to be making to start our stream is a cranberry margarita inspired by these very interesting salt blends. You can see it. Yeah. These are from Auntie Arwen's, which is a spice stealer. Uh, she makes amazing, amazing spice blends. Yeah. Um, and she has a booth at Penzik where we were just yeah. at for a long time. And, um, and I picked these up because I was just like, uh, salt that's like mixed with lemon and cranberry and lime and they're delicious <laughs> and they're perfect for margaritas. So, yeah. Awesome. So this one is literally just sea salt and lime powder that it is the lime fusion sea salt and uh what do you have uh i have the ye old bog stomper which is the cranberry <laughs> lemon salt so it's um cranberry juice powder sea salt lemon peel and lime juice all mixed together and i'm gonna taste it yeah that's <laughs> that's a that was the one that i was like uh i have to get this because that just sounds amazing I've, I've, they say it's really good on poultry and on pork. I'm sure it'd be amazing on pork. I'm going to be but honest. I don't get a lot of the other flavors besides the salt. Besides the salt? I mean, which is fine yeah. because we're using it to rim margaritas, which so normally it would be plain salt anyway. So Yeah, but we thought it would be fun. But yeah, but yeah, that is the reason why we were inspired to do the cranberry margaritas of doing a cranberry salt and a lime salt. But yeah. Um, people who have heard me speak or sing before may have, be picking up on the fact that I'm quite <laughs> husky sounding at the moment. Yes. Uh, I completely lost my voice completely. by end of day Saturday yeah. on my way back from Penzik. Um, and I am only slowly recovering and, uh, that's why I'm sounding a little more smoker cough <laughs> than usual. So... Which is impressive because I don't smoke or anything. Yeah. No idea how I lost my voice. Yeah, just completely. It just happens. But it happens every year. Yeah. Well, it's Penzik, right? There's a for lot some reason of I lose uh, I lose my voice every year at Penzik. Yeah. But I didn't lose it till the end of the week this time. So yeah. That was because usually fun. usually you use it you lose it like within the first three days. Yeah. And then we just like do hand signals across camp. Yes. You know? That is like yes. a literal. It's thing. really frustrating actually <laughs> because our camp talks a lot. Um, for me to just sit there and be a mute yeah, and not be able to participate. So it was nice to, you know, lose it for the car ride where all it meant was that when we stopped at, Alex and I stopped at Sheets on the way home, I had to signal what uh, order number I had gotten <laughs> to him because I couldn't answer the cashier. So, you, you know, like, I bet I looked, one, yeah, it, but uh, that poor cashier probably had no idea what was going on. But probably thought you were just a mute. That's probably. probably, that's probably what was happening. Probably thought. So what have you, what are you doing here with the, with oh, the limes? Um, so I am going to be creating my, you know, margarita masterpiece. 
So what are the, what are the tools that we have here today? All right, so just getting started. Um, so I just pulled out my mixer and I'm gonna throw a little bit of ice in there. I'm gonna use my hands because it's, it's just, just us. us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not classy. We don't care. Um, but yeah, so we've got my mixer, which I'm gonna be putting all of my stuff into. Um, and first up, I'm gonna do the limes just because they're gonna be a pain. Um, since I didn't bother to buy lime juice, I wanted to do actual limes, which means that I have to now squeeze them out. I oh, think yeah. that's that's nicer though, personally. Like, yeah, lime juice is like even the straight fresh. Oh, yeah. lime juice that's like in the bottle. Like, I'll do that if I'm making bulk um, cocktails, just because ain't nobody got time for that. But um, definitely, if I'm just making it for like one to two person scale, it's so much nicer. Um, oh, someone is ask. Seth is asking if we sing at Penzik. No, I mean we. There's Bardics, so like we'll sing at those. Mm -hmm. um, but like definitely, we don't perform as the maidens or anything because no. so much of our repertoire. Basically, all of our repertoire is honestly too modern because even a lot of the more sea shanty style stuff we do it's, are more modern takes. Yes, yeah, like parodies and stuff like um, that. So. And Penzik is not Ren Fair esque, yeah. where like that stuff will will fly. It's really supposed to be as traditional as yeah. possible there, I, which we are not. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. I, I, two years ago at the Chalkman, Chalkman is a, a bar at Penzik. We'll explain what Penzik is here in a minute, but. Um, there's a there's a specific bar at this event that uh, always has a singing competition every middle Friday of the event, and um, I I'm never there in time for yeah, it. Yeah, and I, I really wanted us to do like a duet this year, but um, I did Pump and Dry. Uh, if you're familiar with that song of ours, Pump and Dry, uh, I did that at the Chalkman competition two years ago and won. Um, I think it was best musical quality um, was my was the was the category that I won in. And um, so I did do a Maiden song there two years ago, um, but that's the only time that I did a Maiden song at a public event. And it's only because it's like, well, it's dirty, but it was based on an actual traditional shanty. Uh, so, so it worked, it kind of worked. <laughs> get away with it. You know what I forgot to grab? If you can grab it while yeah, I'm doing sure. this. We're gonna need a plate um, oh, to right. do the salt. To so do if salt. you can just grab from the kitchen in there. Um, the far right cupboard if you can manage to reach it on the plus side the plates are on the bottom shelf so yep. you should be able to i got it sweet little green plate little green plate go with my little green line so but we said we would explain what penzik is so for those who don't know um penzik is a giant uh and when we say giant it's like a 10,000 person event yeah. um, that happens every end of July through early August, two weeks long. Um, and it is put on by the SCA, this is Soci the Society for Creative Anachronism. Yes. Um, and there, that's not where I meant to do that. <laughs> Whatever. It's going to be a little limier than intended. That's fine. Um, and it is basically a historical reenactment. Um, group that's all about doing research and living history type stuff. Yeah. And while a lot of like living history events and stuff like that, they do festivals and things like that. Uh, you know, like they, there's living history groups that do like Maryland Ren Fair and do like the Celtic festivals and stuff like that up and down the East Coast. This is really kind of like the people who are part of the society are doing it for each other it's you join the society and then you learn yeah. right it's it's like a it's a i don't want to say it's insular or anything like that um because they're very welcoming to, to outsiders etc but it's not like they're going to an event to put on a show for people in t-shirt and jeans wandering through or something like that you know um when they do these weekend events or events like penzik which is a two-week event um it's you you fully immerse yourself you are wearing garb um, the entire time that you're there, you know, mm -hmm. you're, there's no cars or there's supposed to be very little cars, very little modern transport. Um, 
you know, people will even, uh, like, we, you're not encouraged to do this, but people will even, like, forego their glasses for two weeks. Yeah, those are the yeah. people I don't... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like, like well, it's not a good idea, but people will do that type of thing at this event because they're trying to fully immerse themselves in the concept of being in a medieval scope, as it were, so... Um, no, you don't. You don't have to be an SCA to go. Um, we're not. For we're not SCA. Um, we we've we've both talked about we, joining SCA for a long time now. I might. I might do we it. Actually, get, I think get I might do it this year because I did. I did target archery this year which at Penzik, cool. um, which is how I got this awesome bruise. I don't know if you can see it from there, but it's, it's like yeah, healing, no, it. like there, um, because. It turns out I overextend my elbow when I hold my arm out straight. So every time I was releasing the bowstring, because it was the first time I'd ever done like archery, archery, um, I was skimming my elbow with my bowstring, Ow. Um, which was not covered by an arm guard because the arm guard stopped below the elbow for me. Because um, the assumption is that you're going to skim this way, but that's not how my arm works when it's straight it i'm gonna have to learn to twist it yeah because this is me twisting my arm that's crazy yeah but yeah but anyway um so i gave myself a wicked bruise um but i had a lot of fun and um sca the local sca group it's only in like college park is where uh they actually do their archery range right so that's not far at all yeah so um so could totally get to get to there on Sundays and get to take advantage of the fact that they've got an, an arrangement with a, uh, an archery range for me to get more practice in before next year. Plus there's like mentioned the, the weekend events you can go to. Yeah, I know. Right. Uh, it's heavy. All right. So Rouge just poured in about an ounce and a half of lime juice into the mixer. And I am she, making a double portion, yes, by the way. Yeah, this is a double because it's for both of us. So, um, and then what? Three ounces of the cranberry. Yeah, I just I did three ounces of cranberry, three ounces of tequila. This is not like a real recipe. I'm just throw, <laughs> I'm just basically doing. All right, you're supposed to have more of the tequila and the cranberry, and less of the lime and the triple sec. So I did one. I just ended up to make it easy on myself. I did one and a half ounces of lime, one and a half ounces of triple sec, three ounces of cranberry, three ounces of tequila. It's pretty simple. So we'll see how that turns out. Um, so while I'm doing this, do you wanna? I can do the salt. Do we wanna use the cranberry salt? Let's try the cranberry one. Okay. It looks fancy. It looks very fancy. It's all tank and stuff. Like you all can see it. Whoops, there we go. See? For those of you who might not have seen it earlier, Auntie Arwen's cranberry salt. So we're gonna we're gonna pour some of that into the plate here. And I did um, leave half of a yeah. lime there. There we go. Spread that out. Because what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna rim the glasses with the salt. Yes. So you take a little bit of lime. You want to rub it on the edge of the glass, and then you just run the glass through the salt and the lime juice picks up although this I, this may have been the worst plate to grab well it's also you end up having to waste so much yeah. salt mm -hmm. when you're doing it properly um and obviously we're we're being a little careful with it because yeah. we don't want to waste your too much of the salt too much of your fancy salt but you can see see the lovely like rim so so fancy and then we can use that lime yes. as the garnish Oops. And we'll do it again. Let me put a little bit more salt on there. There we go. What? What are you laughing at? Oh, the, the jingles <laughs> upstairs. And ran that glass. <laughs> what are people saying? There we go. Uh, so well, one person pretty. was marveling at my bruise, and someone, and s same person was saying they actually live close to College Park, so maybe they should get back into archery. Oh, there you go. So I, I know who that is. Hey, Sci Guy. <laughs> and then you just pour it in. 
And I could have stringed it, but I actually want the ice for these since they're margaritas. Yeah, it's about even. Looks good. All right, let's try try the fruits of our labors. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Chink. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty good. Yeah. That's a good margarita. The cranberry isn't that strong because I did get the light cranberry. Mm -hmm. No, but it's fine. <laughs> no, but it's like, it's nice because you don't want the cranberry to overpower the tequila and the lime, right? Mm -hmm. It is. It's a quite tart drink, but that's yeah. good because I love tart drinks. Oh, this tart is so nice. So, so yes. So, so now we have, and I uh, didn't need this one at all because... I'm lazy and prefer doing everything out of one if I can help it. Well, it means less dishes, so. That, and I'm all about that. That's true. Unlike Alex. <laughs> You're just like all, he's like all the dishes. He thinks he's on a cooking show. No, it's true. Because he's not the one that does the dishes afterwards. Yeah. I did, I did part of the deal this year. I went to Pedzik, um, and I did all the dishes for the camp for all the nighttime dishes. Um, and nights that Alex cooked was like, how did you use this many dishes making pasta. I'm so fucking confused. <laughs> it's very confusing. Yeah. Yeah. Versus you would think a dish that's called one pot pasta would be one would pot. be a one pot sort of yeah. dish. Yeah. To be you would be wrong when <laughs> Alex is cooking. It's so true. In his defense he was cooking for 30, so yeah. making it fit all in one pot be no longer becomes really possible. Well, he also... like, But he well, also just... Yeah. You, well, because he uses a separate cutting board for every vegetable. Yeah. Like, he doesn't He doesn't go, oh, I've used this cutting board for onions. I should go rinse it and then use it for... Tomatoes. Tomatoes, right? No, none of that. It's separate cutting board for, for onions, separate cutting board for tomatoes, separate cutting. And I was like, that's nice because we do have a lot of allergies in the camp and stuff, especially myself. So it's like, I can't have onions. So, you know, and then also he was cooking, he was cooking gluten-free and he was cooking for me, which meant that he couldn't just do one pot. Yeah. It had to be three there separate pots. There was the gluten-free. So there was a gluten-free pot, an onion-free pot, and then the regular pot. Yeah. So... Meh. But the other dead. the other generally restrictive one, the vegan, could yeah. just eat everything in that dish. Yeah. Right, yeah, because there, no, there was no meat. There yeah. was no meat in the, the one pot. Yeah. But, but yeah. Or but egg, he still or, yeah. you know, dairy or... But he still uses too many. He still uses too many dishes. So many dishes. <laughs> it's, just, it's obscene. But enough of me complaining <laughs> about my general chores. Because that's okay. what the people are that's, tuning in that's to what they, That's what they really Just want. listening to me bitch about uh, how many dishes pile up for a standard dinner. I don't know. I mean, I think I think there's definitely some uh, Miss Baby Maidens fans that would just listen to you talk all the time. <laughs> uh, but, but do they like the Husky version? Yes. Hus the Husky <laughs> Rouge. That's, that's, that's what's going on right now. <laughs> Anyway, ex ex Penzik Rouge. No, but Penzik um, was uh, it was the, the it, it was, was good. Yeah, it was good. Did you like your Penzik? I mean, I yeah, know you had a weird yeah, Penzik yeah. where weird you were Penzik. like spent a lot of time just not doing things. This Penzik. It was. I needed to rest though. Like I, yeah. I, I really did. It was. It was nice to get away from the electronics because my yeah. phone died like probably two or three days in, and fortunately, like people were messaging me while I was you know, I'm not having my phone out and stuff like that. But fortunately, nobody was trying to message me at Penzik, if that makes sense, right? Nobody was yeah. trying to, like... Because we warned, we warned people that would normally be able to get in touch with us like, regularly that we were going to be in the woods. We'll be so in the don't, woods. Don't, don't message me. So, yeah. Um, so, it was nice. It was nice to unplug. That's for yeah. sure. And, like... Didn't have to deal with any of the um, the news that happened while we were gone. Oh, oh God. <laughs> um, so we have a question about what our Penzik day today is and specifically was there Pirate Olympics. So uh, the Pirate Olympics, um, there actually is, I don't know if you specifically knew the fa that that was an event that we participated in. Um, before, and that's why you asked specifically about the Pirate Olympics. Uh, but probably. I mean, we've talked about it when we've sat together yeah. and drank before because it's so, so amazing. Um, the Pirate Olympics has been on hiatus for, I want to say, the last two years. Yes, two years. 
Um, so actually, our camp was so sad that it was slowly showing signs that it probably wasn't going to come back. That this year, we actually did an agreement with the camp that um, originally hosted it that we are going to start taking it over and we are going to be the main organizers for the Pirate Olympics at Penzik. So that is something that we're going to try and get off the ground again next year, which we're very excited about because um, we have many excellent stories of people in our camp getting <laughs> far too drunk. Far too drunk. And, and uh, it, it does also, it gives us an opportunity to rework it a little bit so it's not quite so dangerous as slash it was. like slash then the people who cheat yeah oh man there was so much cheating and everybody kept being like oh we're pirates it's fine if we cheat and it's like no because it's really not fair like for the pe for the people who don't know Penzik that well you you basically just you're you're the people who participated in previous years who just stockpiled their tokens from previous years oh, yeah um and basically hit up like, how are you going to, how do you have any chance of winning if this is your first time participating and someone else has three years worth of tokens that they've sort of half hung on to? Yeah. So they do like one or two of the 10 camps they're supposed to hit in this Olympic event before. Um, so for people, we're, we're casual. We can't, we're we're like, like, no, 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 no. oh, wait, maybe we should sure. explain it. So the Pirate Olympics is basically an event. That was designed to be, it was put on by one of the camps at Penzik that has a very pirate aesthetic. The idea is you pretty much jump from around 10 different camps all over Penzik that have signed up to be the host camps. Yeah. And when the competitors get to each camp, they have to do a challenge or they have to do a pirate trivia and they have to get it right on the first try. Otherwise, if they get the trivia wrong, then they have to revert to doing a challenge. Um, challenges can be uh, like a talent, like singing, or camps started having their own challenge within their camp of an option, like you have to do limbo. Yeah, there was a, the, a good example was the walk the plank challenge where you mm -hmm. had to actually balance like on a balance beam and like bend over and pick something up and then walk back. And it, and it was like if you fell off, you had to start over. So it's like it, you wouldn't always necessarily make it kind of thing. And somebody could literally come into the camp behind you and complete the challenge faster than you were completing it. <laughs> and you don't know what this what the camps are. Yeah. Um, each time you successfully finish one camp, they tell you what your next stop is. Yeah. And then you have to figure out where to go. Um, so you're supposed to do, oh, and each camp, once you've done your challenge or your trivia, you have to take a shot of rum. Which which means that you're doing the, the best. faster you do this, because the <laughs> winner in most years does it in about two hours, two hours. maybe, because the, it is designed that you're running back and forth all of, up and down Penzik which can easily be mean you're running I think, a quarter of a mile or so in between every camp. Yeah. We, so, we figured out we, we did a total of like... Two and a half, three miles worth of worth running. Of, yeah. Over running. the course of two hours, because that also includes, you know, time to do the trivia, the challenge, the rum, what yeah. have you. Um, bathroom stops. So, um, and you get a token to prove you've been to each camp. Right. But they weren't changing out the tokens year to year, so it was the same old gold plastic coins. So. so people were keeping them year to year, so they would like go to like half of the camps and then, then just go back to the original camp and be like, oh look, we have all the tokens. Because that's the one thing, is that the end camp is always the, the first camp. So you'd start and end at the same camp, so. Yeah, so everybody knew that it was going to be, you go back to Otto's Cove. Blah, blah, blah. And yeah. And then the other way people were cheating was is they would go, we, we started the, um, uh, helpers thing where basically we would participate in the Olympics where we would have one person running the actual Olympics and then they would have a, basically, a like a, a squire, side, a squire <laughs> to go with them, make sure that they stayed hydrated, make sure that like they didn't die. Hold on to their water, yeah. probably bread or something <laughs> like that as a snack, and be the person to remind said competitor that, hey, maybe you should have some water. Yeah, and okay. also like be like, be like, remember, we are competing here, like, you know, stop stopping to talk to people and things like that. Because when you get drunk, you start, you know, just messing around. Um, and... 
And so people were like, oh, that's a really good idea. That's really smart to like go as a team. So then what people were doing is they were going as a team of like two or three. And then each time they would get to a camp, they would say that a different one of them was the, the competitor. competitor. And so basically it was like, so there was no there was no accountability for like, there was no hand stamp or something like this is the person who's competing. And so they were basically, instead of doing one person doing 10 shots in two hours, it was three people doing 10 shots in two hours. And it's like, well, that's, that's super cheating because the whole point is, is you're supposed to get drunk and it's supposed to get harder and harder and harder to do this as you go on. Um, so yeah, so we, so we're, we're really looking forward to retooling the entire fucking event and just, making sure that nobody can actually cheat. Because even though it's like, yeah, being a pirate, cheating, I guess it's... As opposed to the way our campmate cheated, within, which was a totally respectable way to cheat, which was that <laughs> he managed to commandeer one of the buses. Because there, yes. there are buses, since they're trying to make it... Accessible. Um, accessible for people with physical disabilities who may not be able to walk around as much. Um... So he managed to flag one down that happened to be passing and use it to, instead of having to run to the next camp, um, so just took a bus. it was going to be along the shuttle route. Um, they, they managed to flag down the bus when it wasn't actually at a stop, hop on and, uh, hop off really close to the next, uh, next thing. But I feel like that's, I feel like that's reasonable. That's using the, that's, that's also using the like resources. you can't. You can't plan ahead for that. Yeah, no. He got lucky. He got super lucky. Like, there's no way to, like... Because the, even though they, they have an app now for the buses so that people aren't sitting and waiting for, like, an hour for buses, um, you know, telling you, oh, the bus will be at your at your local, you know, stop in the next, like, 15 minutes, right, kind of thing. But it's still not 100% accurate. So it's not like, you know, if you, and if you sit and wait at a bus stop for 15 minutes, that's 15 minutes that you've lost, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So it's not... It's not worth it to try and do that. That was like, that was literally like a super badass pirate move. <laughs> it was also so. his like birthday. Oh, it, it was. was. That, his That's birthday right. on that day. That's right. Or it was like within a day or two of his birthday. So our camp was, there were like three people competing that year, but it was really all about him winning yeah. anyway. Yeah. So they, uh. And he, he did get, like, second place or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've never managed to get anybody first place because Autos Cove has someone who literally runs. Just... Well, the other thing and, is, is that, like... And, like, does not show any sign that the rum affects them at all. Yeah. They just literally... They're just... They... And they so they win every year. It's like, okay, the camp who started this, they have a win... They, their guy wins every year. That seems suspicious. It's just suspicious. Just a little. Just a little bit. Anyway... Um, so somebody's asking if Penzik has running water. It, it does. does, actually. But it's like hose hookups. Um, so, you know, your camp, there's basically just a hookup on your block. Because uh, they divide the whole campground into blocks. Um, so, so it's like, and then they number all the different blocks. And, like, because there's actually, like flushies as we like to call them which is like real toilets up near the marketplace and there's like real toilets and stuff like that and, and there's like two two different bathhouses yeah. around the lake where you can go get normal showers yeah you get like a regular shower and there's actual like flush toilets and it's like oh okay so but if you're not anywhere near that it's kind of like uh all right so what they have is, is they have porta johns for the rest of all of the blocks they do clean them twice a day though yeah. so they are better than your They're, average porta john yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not it's not too bad. And then um, in the case of our camp, we actually have a, a real shower. So we we, hook, do. we hook it up to the hoses that we string along the. Yeah. the so we've got of the a block. heating a heating system, mm -hmm. filtration system. So because um, while well, they'll say that you can drink the water, we've seen what our filters look like after a couple days, just a couple days it's, of filtering it's, that water. The water it's is hard water. Yeah, it's very, it's full of iron. And it's it does not, wonderful things for your hair, I have to say. Like, it makes your hair really nice and soft and everything. But uh, but I wouldn't want to drink it. So, yeah. so we yeah. we shower in it and, and wash our dishes in it and stuff like that. But the... Um, well, those, we use 
and then we the, use the, I mean yeah, we, oh, and then that's we use the like, and then water. we have and then we have lots and lots of filters. The only water yeah. the only water we use that's not filtered is the hand washing sink. Right. The hand washing station. We have we have one sink that we put outside of our camp since we're right across from the Porta Johns for our block. Um, so that instead of using, you know, the, the Purell hand sanitizer type stuff that they include in there, yeah. people can wash their hands with actual running water when they get out of the Porta Johns. So nice. it's our, it's our service to the rest of the block so that they don't hate us, even though we're <laughs> the largest, loudest bl- camp on the, like we're, we're truly obnoxious. We are obnoxious. <laughs> we're terrible. Like we're just so loud during the day of just everyone being just really amused by themselves yeah. and each other yeah. and just being drunk and loud. So we got to do something to, uh, to get appease. ourselves, yeah. yeah, appease our neighbors. Although I thought it was funny, Freeman this year, Freeman is a longtime bard at Penzik, like everybody knows him, or at least he likes to think he knows everybody. Um, <laughs> and he never, rem- he, I don't know if it's on purpose, but he, simultaneously remembers me and doesn't remember me every time mm-hmm. we talk. He's just one of those people that's like, he, he remembers enough vague details about you that he can like start a conversation with you. And then instantly you realize like he knows he, he doesn't remember you at all. He's just making shit up. Um, but he came by at the very end of Penzik to be like, thank He's like, you all have been on the block. What? Like six years. And I was like, this is our eighth year, you know, reminding you him. What? It is our eighth year. It was our seventh year. I thought no, because it because seventh. Oh, are you serious? Seventh. Oh, it was. We've done. We did three years on the island, and we've done. We've done four now. I thought. I thought it was our island. eighth year because tenth. I thought our tenth anniversary was going to be Pensac fifty. No, I thought that was the whole thing. No. No. Okay, I got it wrong. But anyway, he. But but um, but then he was like a. Uh, He's like, thank you all for, like, not being dicks. And I was like, really? Are you sure we haven't been dicks? Because I'm pretty sure we've been dicks. I'm like, sure he just doesn't <laughs> think we're dicks because he's far enough away he can't hear us. That's also true. <laughs> to be fair, that's really why we're dicks. Like, yeah. we're not dick. We're not. We're not actually assholes. We're not terrible like, people yeah. to anybody otherwise. It's yeah. just we know we're loud. Yeah. And drunk most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. That, we're that is our high. Kid. We're high. Yeah. I mean. Well, we are in the high meadows, so. It, just We're all high in the high mess. Yeah. Ah. So it was every camp on the block, though. To be fair, like it's not. It's not. Just Maybe us. not the one with small children. Okay, fair. They may abstain. I don't know. I mean, like when we were over there that last night for their little bacon party. That was... wasn't the kids. Penultima. Penultima is not the one. With I the thought kids. Penultima had kids. Monkey too. bats is the one with the kids. Oh, okay. I thought. Why did I think that Penultima also had kids? I... Maybe. Maybe they do. Like, I know Monkey Bats has, has kids, but I thought Pentaltima also had kids. And up, I do know that, that Monkey, Bot, Monkey Bats, I, I know that the parents in, in that camp get high as fuck. Well, <laughs> Everybody on the high meadows gets high then. Yep. Yep. Anyway, uh, let's see. What are people saying? How to get into our camp. So yeah. our camp is actually very exclusive. Yeah, and we're not <laughs> really kidding about that. <laughs> Um, we have a, we actually have, um, because we are so careful about wanting everybody in our camp to always feel comfortable and to never have a situation where someone essentially gets run out of the camp by a newcomer that they just can't feel comfortable around. Um, we actually have a whole system where you have to be sponsored by someone in the camp. Um, so they have to say that they will take responsibility for you basically the whole time you're there. Um, and when you're a guest, yeah, um, which is the first stage. And, um, and then everybody, all of the members of our camp actually get to vote of whether that person gets to camp with us in a given year. Yeah. Um, and we don't generally turn people down because normally if someone in our camp is willing to say this person is a good friend of mine, significant other of mine, someone that I completely vouch for, it's rare for it to be someone that meanwhile someone else in the camp has had a negative experience with, but it has happened that we've ended up having people that it turned out that, um, did not gel with someone who was being put up to yeah. be a guest. Yeah. Um, and people have been turned down. Yeah. Which but, sucks. Yeah. But it's kind of important to make sure that people who've invested 
because we've all years of building up the camp and making this like an event that they go to every year and building this community with us don't get run out by the newbie yeah yeah it's important um so after the guest guest stage you so you you get voted in and then you have to be on your best behavior while you're there. Well, hopefully it's your normal behavior. Well, right, right, right. But like, hopefully you're just hopefully your normal behavior is 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 good behavior. And, yeah. And, and it's like we all get drunk. We all we that you know there are substances, um, and and we all hang out and stuff like that. Um, and people people can you know be obnoxious and things like that. But it's like don't you know if you are picking fights the entire time that you're there or you're don't not do clean, your chores don't do your chores you're not cleaning up after because we yourself. assign we assign chores yeah you have to you have, everybody pitches in teamwork makes the dream work guys yeah. and when you're when you're a guest you're doing like the bulk of the chores too because it's just like hey you don't have to do setup you don't have to do breakdown um, you didn't have to do any of the administration stuff in between, so it's like so you so you went the camp the, work days the camp that we do days. and the rest of the time where we're building the various infrastructure we use in our camp. Yeah, so et cetera. So you uh, um, so you do a chore every day while everybody else does a chore like maybe like every other day kind of thing. Um, I did like three chores this war. Yeah, well, but I also did both setup and breakdown, and I'm second in command in our camp so yeah. i do a lot of administrative work for the camp right but next year i am no longer in charge of anything looking forward to that year huh <laughs> yes i mean i'm still gonna end up doing like other oh, yeah. admin stuff the same way like you did some admin yeah. stuff this mm-hmm. year but i'm no longer part of like the core leadership yeah. team anymore because i had two years of being well, I'd many, many you had, years you had of four being years of your, being second in command. Since we didn't have a um, a system in place when you and I started the camp, yeah, to pass on. Since when, when we were getting it off the ground, so for four years you were head of camp and I was second in command. Yeah, and then you finally stepped back. <laughs> I burned the fuck out. Let's and when I stepped up as head of camp, <laughs> we made a ruling of that shouldn't happen anymore. So we yeah. were going to do, t- we, we created the system of two years as head of camp where um, your first year as head of camp, in theory, the previous head of camp would be your second in command to be there, your consultant basically, Um, with all of the knowledge that they had for having run the camp the past two years. Then the second year, the person is head of camp. The person who is going to be the incoming head of camp will be their second in command so that they can assist and learn everything. Um, And then it continues on. So this is the chain system we've created that we're just now doing. So I did two years... um, where now and then I just did my second in command year where the current head of camp I was assisting them so next year that same person will still be head of camp but they will be assisted by the person who's going to replace them as head of camp yeah yeah so gotta we 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 figured this way it keeps um it passes on the knowledge that we need and make sure there's a consistent flow of of like okay processes and knowledge it would also because it would suck if like every two years there was whiplash the you know like oh Mm -hmm. we're this is one way that the camp runs and then oh no now it's going to be run this way and oh it's gonna you know there's and there's changes every year and there's changes you know we like vote on new rules and we vote on new processes and stuff like that so Um, it's always changing anyway yeah it's constantly changing but but it's but it doesn't it doesn't do like it's not like a one year um, we're going to allow you know nudity and then the next year we're not kind of thing. It's sort of like there's this whole process of like all right, what is no we allow kids in this camp? Oh, Hell God. no, yeah, no stuff like that where you know we we just try to make sure that it doesn't yeah yeah. But it also means but it also means that nobody's getting burnt out the way that what happened with me because yeah I, so see so yeah. seven. So you seven, just said, right, yeah, you were, right, you were head of camp for four, four you were I was two, head of camp so, for right, two, so it was seven years. and now we had the, the person who replaced us was head of camp for one, so it was seven. Yep. This was our seventh year. Yep. You just keep getting confused because, because there because, was a year where we went before we right. started the camp, Yes. and the year before that, you I went, went, I went, which so. is how you then decided you had to bring me the next year. Yes, 
because I was like, I really enjoyed Penzik, but I was like, I want my friends here. Because the camp. The camp that I was part of. That was, existed, that we camped with. Yeah. Your year and then. I was the friend, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm still friends with them, but but it, it wasn't. a it The wasn't, way that they ran their camp was not the way a, we wanted to enjoy Penzik. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted more of a. They did not have chores. Experience. It was very much a free for all. They did not, they were not very good about welcoming newcomers either. No. I just sort of, I didn't know anything about how Penzik worked or how. You were basically relying on my knowledge and then I was relying on Kieran's knowledge. And that's when like Kieran was like, we could start our own camp. And he was like, we should, I'm going to start a camp. And I was like, okay, I'll support you in this. And then that meant that I started a camp and <laughs> Rouge supported me in this. <laughs> Because bitches get shit done. Because bitches get shit done. It's very. Which funny. is why our camp has been a matriarchy. Ma- yeah, which is which is very for, unusual for Penzo. Um, for a while now, we're in. We are actually finally about to have our first male head of camp. Like after next in line. Next in line is a guy. Ooh. So year nine, we will finally have a male head. You're fifty. Yeah, you're 50. He's going to be in he's gonna he's be gonna in, be charge. in charge and you're he's going to be our first male head of camp. Yep. That's okay though cuz he practically runs our he does all of the infrastructure for our camp anyway. He's been doing it for years. So he's already been heavily involved in the oh, running yeah. of our camp for the entirety of our camp. But so um do would we suggest lots of research? Yeah, we would suggest a lot. if if you want like um guides and stuff like that yeah. you can hit us up and we can sh- there's we can lots of newbie you. guides yeah um and it is possible to go in camps that are open to just anybody um like kingdom camps um the the ones that are like the more sca camps they will accept anybody who yeah is part of like their region yeah so um, you, can, you can and then there's there's also camps that run like advertisements where they're like this is the type of camp we are and we're looking for new members to come and here's here's what's expected of you money wise and because you usually have to pay like an amount of money to be part of a camp just because yep. it's, there's infrastructure we have membership dues for anyone who's part a member which is how we do our infrastructure mm-hmm. but then we also do camp fees which is how we do things like tiki fuel firewood etc for our camp every year yeah and then on top of that we have options for meal plans where you can opt in to a breakfast plan or a dinner plan or both. Um, and those are, so those are all different ways you can end up costing money. Yeah. We're a very affordable camp. Oh yeah. Um, there's definitely some camps. How much you end up paying rent differs camp to camp. So there's like, we charge something like 35, 40 bucks for our camp fees. Cause we're just trying to cover like the bare minimum of communal water, firewood, tiki fuel, etc. Yeah. Uh, propane that we need in order to run things like the shower. There are camps where it's like two hundred dollars. Yeah. And that does not get you food or anything. That's just. Yeah. And that's on top of your your badge fee, essentially. Like the actual degrees, registration yeah. for yeah. the event. It's 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 medallions instead of badges, but it's the same yeah. thing as like buying a, a badge to Dragon Con or something. Okay. But it's also possible to go, if you don't find a larger camp you want to be part of, it is possible to go, and there is such a thing as singles camping, so you can just show up on by your own. Uh, it also only takes four people to start a camp. Yeah. So, if so you, you get... can also just get yourself and, three other, and three other friends, and you can start a camp. Yeah. Which is what we did. Yeah. Although we had 15 people our That's first year. That's true. We did. We had, we had a huge camp for our, for our for first a, year. For a newbie camp, 15 out of the blue is pretty big. Mm-hmm. Most camps are closer to, you know, four to like 10 is even yeah. considered, I think, it's, a pretty big first year camp. Oh, for sure. Um, not like a big camp in general. The biggest camps, I mean. Oh, God. Like the biggest 70 camps. plus is like the biggest camps. Mm, kingdom camps can get up to being like over 100 yeah, people. Yeah, like, they're big. Yeah, the kingdoms themselves are about huge. Um, I mean, like, the Pleasure Pavilions was at its heyday. They claimed that they were, like, 150 people, um, like, way back in the day. But I think that they were just registering people. 
because that's that used to be a thing that that people would do um, is you would register yourself and then you would also register like fake kids um, so that you would get extra space allotted to your camp because every person gets a specific amount of space um, that's considered to be like you know safe living space essentially and so that's what your your camp gets so like we each get two what is it 250 250 square feet of space per person that registers and our camp has a rule that half of that goes to you for your personal tent and then half goes to the camp because we need space we you know the the camp needs the the walkways come out of the communal space um and then there's also the communal space of the actual kitchen showers kitchen sink dining hall we have a like pavilion tent that's just there for people to have a place to hang out outside of the sun yeah or Um, if it rains it's a good if it rains we use it uh not this year because unfortunately where we placed it it flooded it flooded we're we're talking about like building a floor for it next next um but last year because it was placed slightly differently in our space there the the dips were not underneath where it last year so last year we actually used it like the one main night it rained and everyone just piled in which yep. was awesome that was fun and we have a bar tent yes with, with uh, draft beer i was gonna say with draft beer and everything because we fancy yeah it's not it's not really camping it really isn't it's <laughs> like, glamping but if you but if you're not with a camp that does all of this type of stuff. It will be more like it's camping. Much more like just a regular camping experience. Yeah. Especially like, you know, those camps where it's like four to six people on their first year. They probably just have regular camping gear. Yep. Um, and it's not really affordable to have a real shower solution on your own. Um, like there's units like our first year we had the Zodi, which you hook up to a propane tank. And there, it's like a, the tiniest little pilot flame is supposed to heat <laughs> the water that's going through this hose. Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! It doesn't. Like, <laughs> would not recommend. Would not recommend. It works really well for like a hand washing station or yeah, a foot washing yeah. station or something like that. But it's just not. It's not conducive to like a shower experience. So, but fortunately, we got Sean, and Sean built us a real shower. <laughs> like, it's an actual shower unit. In the middle of the woods. Yeah, Sean came with a shower, a sink, an oven stove range, an ice box. Yeah. We we got Sean in our camp and suddenly we just like... We got all this nice stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So so he'll be a good leader in two years. Yeah, it'll be good. Mm -hmm. It'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Especially now that we're finally at the point where we don't have to rely on him for everything as far as transportation and uh, and set up. So he can do head of camp stuff right. as opposed to everything at that point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be good. It'll be good. No, it'll be fun times. So we're coming up on the end of our hour that we were going to stream. Um, we hope you've enjoyed listening to us rant. Ramble. <laughs> ramble about pan- Um And enjoyed watching the drink making. Try one on your on your own at some time. Um, you're going to start doing this on the reg, right? You're going to do a drink. Every and... other Monday. Yep. I may not have one of the other maidens with me, so it'll be a lot harder for me to keep, uh, keep your conversation flowing. You're going to have to, like, talk a lot more to her and stuff. <laughs> it'll be more of a conversation between us. Yeah. Less of a conversation between us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, Saber can't can't be here every time, but um, it yeah, works. it's gonna be every other Monday night, and yeah, a cocktail and a chat. So by all means, looking forward to getting questions from people so that I have a uh, have something to talk about. Looks like somebody's it's a, it's a cat saying that they have Monday evenings free, so we'll have plenty of questions Great. for you. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, we're not quite at the hour mark since we did get started a little bit oh, late. Oh, that's true. We did get started a little bit late. We got but... started a good five minutes late. So um, by any means, if anyone has any more questions, any other questions, they're dying to know about Penzik or other things. You don't have to ask us about Penzik. We just have Penzik on mind since we just, just got back. back. Just got back. Let's see. Uh, oh, 
Mm-hmm. We uh, did points for mid round this year because the aforementioned Sean is our main fighter in the camp. He's the only heavy. He's the fighter. only heavy fighter in camp. Um, because Levi is not fully fledged part of camp yet, and he did not decide to do heavy fighting this year. So we kind of declare for whoever Sean declares Sean's for. A, well, Sean's a um, he's a mercenary, so yeah, he just gets he whoever has the best bid. Um, we go with and um yeah because he's part of another group he attaches to another camp since he's a lone heavy fighter um so then everybody else in our camp does uh target archery was how we did points so we declared for the same yeah same kingdom as uh so just to keep things consistent in our uh in our camp yep. so this year it was because it was evil mark was who they declared for so that was part of mid realm yeah so yeah yep yep Sure you don't know what Mars Con or Raven Con? Uh, we can tell you that we are doing Mars Con this next year. So yeah, we, we did get official confirmation as far as Mars Con is concerned. So that's on the plan. I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, we're, you know, like, because obviously things change. That's a ways away. Um, but that is our plan for next year. So And uh, we, I mean, we're not planning on doing Raven Con because one of our members had <laughs> yeah. a conflict. Yeah. So we couldn't. We couldn't even really apply yeah. um, this year because they had a they had a wedding, stupid wedding. Wedding. They're just the worst. They are. They just... Why does anybody get married? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck weddings. They're the worst. They really are. Wedding culture is just like <sighs> gross. So why you didn't have one? It's true. That's, why that's the reason. Not that's because reason. you just didn't want to organize one. Well, I mean, it's not that I don't want to organize a party. You know me. I, like, I want to organize a party. I just don't want to get... I just didn't want to have a wedding. wedding. You can is... just do a party. We're going to. We just have no money or time. <laughs> it doesn't have to be fancy. I know. Um, oh, somebody missed the cocktail. What did we make? Oh, it was a cranberry margarita because, um, speaking of Penzik. Saber bought and brought back these lovely, um, fancy ass lime, uh, lime salts. There, yeah, that probably is some form of legible. And a cranberry salt from Auntie Arwen's, which is a shop we cannot recommend highly enough. Yeah, um, just because the spice blends they do are amazing. Some of them are like actually historically researched, um, which is always really fascinating. Um, and use really interesting spices you may not see as commonly in your spice aisle. Yeah. And, and, and then, um, they, like, on each bottle, it has suggestions of, like, what it's good for. Yeah. Um, inclu- and then she lists all of her ingredients. Like, everything that goes into this is, is listed on the bottle. So it's, like, really great if you have allergies, like I do, and things like that. You're not going to get surprised by onion powder or something yeah. in a blend. Um, and then the other thing, um, like, I got... Uh, these these lime lime and cranberry salts, and then she also is famous for her garlic insanity. Garlic insanity is the blend that the everyone blend. goes for. Yeah, yeah. They instead of being sold in these little jars, normally they're sold in like the giant like plastic things. Plus, one of the other nice things about Auntie Arwen's is that they always have a giant sign um, in their shop that says no homophobia racism um no transphobia no bigotry no um like just basically everything you know this huge list and uh, and and this year they had written on it no trumpism yes (laughs) which honestly for this event i mean that is that's a big thing so it was basically there's a lot of pro-trump people who go to this event yeah i mean they just it is because it's a mix of, since it's historical reenactment, you also get the people who sort of aspire to when men were men and uh, the time of chivalry. And, uh, and it's it's a very white event. Like, it's very I, white. Very I explained white. to one of my coworkers, I was like, this is some white nonsense. It really is that we spend this much money to like just go and live in the woods you know for two weeks um um, because it's it's and and it's they keep talking about how how they're like we we need to make this event more welcoming to women and to queer people and to people of color but then they don't do anything to like actually make it welcoming so it's really nice to see 
stuff like that, where you walk into a shop and they're basically like, if you mention Trump in the shop, we won't sell our product to you. Sorry. <laughs> it's like, wow, damn. Okay, good. Take it a stand. Thank a very you. public stand. A very, very public stand. And especially because it's like she's so highly like regarded in at Penzik. Like she is she's a freaking goddess. Um so uh it's nice to it was really nice to see that this year. And and a lot and actually this year was a was we uh, termed it the year of the yeet. <laughs> right? Yes, in our camp. Our, our camp, camp had decided this was the year of the yeet. Because you were we were yeeting. We were yeeting a lot of stuff. That we uh, um, had no use for anymore. Yep. And, uh, and, but it was also a year of the yeet for Penzik, for the SCA. Um, one of the kings this past year was outed as a Nazi and got uh, dethroned and kicked out of the SCA. Um, there was a vendor who at, in, at Penzik was, uh, is probably not going to be asked back anymore because guess what? He's also a Nazi. Um, there was a large... Well-known camp. We won't get. We won't. We, we won't, won't name names. Name names. <laughs> but um, last year there was an incident. It turned out with one of their primary members um, having a history of uh, predatory behavior at parties, um, especially with young women. Young women. Um, like very young, very inexperienced women. Yeah. And um, the camp itself did not take action because this person does so much money for the camp. Um, and the event got wind and dealt with it. The the campground actually. Yeah, like the it, it wasn't necessarily the SCA that got involved. It was the people who owned the the ground, the campground that by chance use. got yeah. involved and kicked out this person. And due to people being so disappointed with the reaction that this camp had about their own member, um, this camp went from being one of, like, the The institution party party camps to was begging for people to come to their usual event this year. Nobody went. Um, So it was actually really uh, pretty gratifying to see people, like, within the uh yes they are a great family yes they're a lovely family that who owns the campground and uh, runs pensacola and they they take they take accusations like this very seriously and in general there is a lot of there's for a for a very long time there's been a lot of mentality in the SCA and Pensic that it's like oh we police our own we'll watch over our own oh don't go to the authorities because will handle it in like within our groups and things like that and that doesn't happen and so a lot of people are finally going hey we're we're no we're we're going to go to the authorities now um because you promised us you'd take care of it and you didn't and said things have been swept under the rug yeah for, for years for years and years and years so so it's it's nice to see the organization uh sort of looking at itself because it's been a while since that's happened um, and there's like there was a huge anti-bullying movement this year. Um, there was a there was a lot of like people just watching out for each other. There was a couple of new organizations that cropped up to like just make sure people stay safe at Penzik and things like that. There was um, there were consent classes that happened as part of the actual official Penzik University. I did enjoy the description they even included. And let's be honest, the people who need this class aren't going to come. Yeah. So they're going to do a lot of focus on bystander training for consent because we all know the people who need it ain't going to do it. Yep. Yep. So, but it was nice to see all of that happening. It was this year at Penzik, and so it was the year of the eat. Year of the eat. Yes, get rid of them. We don't need them. Kick them out. Get them out. So yeah. So that There's was really no cool. one so integral to this game to require them to make Penzik, yeah, happen. Nope. Nope. And you can say that about pretty much anything. Yeah. No, it's very true. There's everybody who tries to claim, oh, this important, this person's important. It's like there's. 20 people who are just as important to them that aren't an asshole, that yeah. aren't a terrible person. And who so. knows who you're basically running out yeah. by letting that person stay? Yeah. Because who knows who's going to basically be like, well, if that person's there, I'm just not going to come. Fuck that noise. Yeah. It's true. 
That's true. You can't you can't have everybody. No. So choose the people who are quality, not just the people who've been around and you who you think are that are necessary or who make you think that they're necessary. If somebody's trying really hard by spending a lot of money or like kissing up to, you know, the authorities and stuff like that of in some way uh, or or you know they're investing a little too much you know but they're also doing terrible things they they're doing they're they're manipulating you know they're being a manipulator so they're, they're not they're not needed they can just they can get yeet <laughs> so yeah so i think now we have reached our hour so unless anyone has any burning questions for us we may sign off. Last call. I have to wait a minute because it, it lags a little bit. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Now let's see, what do we got coming up next? Well, we have... We have a rehearsal on Thursday. Are we going to stream from that one? Is that uh, that's I don't happening? think I don't think we're streaming. Not from, yet. No. Okay. But that is that is a, that is something that we're going to try and be doing is um, streaming some rehearsal time. Yep, that's other uh, other Twitch streaming we're going to be doing is uh, about once a month. We will stream a little bit from our rehearsals so that people can see us actually practice. So exciting! I know. Um, so I guess that's not coming up though. Um, yeah. We probably have other. There's other streams Twitch coming up. streams coming um, up. We're 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 um, starting to get to the point where, we're, as a band, we're gonna hammer down a like regular schedule of uh, things for your perusal. Yeah. So for Annie, your enjoyment. Annie's gonna be doing a cooking show. Flint is gonna be streaming D and D and gaming. Rouge is gonna be doing the mix it up. Um, I am trying to figure out exactly what I'm gonna be doing um, since Twitch will not really let me do sex education. Um, boo. I know it's boo. Um, if I can figure out a way to do it, I'll I'll, I'll do some sort of sex ed thing. Um, but otherwise, I'll probably just stream playing Skyrim because Skyrim. So. <laughs> and then of course, besides Twitch, we have coming up at the end of this month, Dragon Con. Very exciting. Cannot so, wait. Uh, Cannot wait for Dragon Con. So, very exciting. But yeah. But I think that's it. Um, thank you all for joining us. And we will see you next time. Good night. Bye.